Hi, this is Emily. Welcome to my channel here at the Coloring Oasis. Today we are going to do together sort of a box opening test and coloring with the new Karen Dash 30 Fabralo pens. I did show these briefly in my November Coloring Supplies haul video, which I can link below. But I'm going to open them. We're going to try them out. I'm going to do them with and without water. Um, we are going to try them out in this beautiful book by Demita Victoria, the Native American book, Grayscale Edition. Since it's Thanksgiving month, I'm doing a few pages in this book. So I did choose a page to do here. We're going to test it out. And these are, this is a gorgeous book, by the way. So I will do a flip through of this as well. Um, I'm also going to test it out on my uh, Nina paper. This is just a random picture I printed from diminutive seaside scenes or that I copied. This is my Nina cardstock paper. I do most of my Etsy printables on this paper. And then I have a blank one as well for testing colors if needed. Other supplies we will be using is my Arteza water brush pen, which I purchased in a pack of like six or eight. Um, I've used this before, so I will um, show you that as well. Um, so if you're new to my channel, please subscribe and give this video a little like so you don't miss any upcoming tutorials, box openings, or Christmas coloring book reviews, um, demos, and my completed coloring pages. So um, let's get started first on, I'm going to show you a quick flip through of this gorgeous book. It got a little bent because it's been on my shelf for a few months since I purchased it. But um, th this is Demita Victoria. This is kind of the Amazon paper with the black backing, which I believe is similar to what the Coco Wayo books use. They do give you two repeating, um, two sets or repeating sets. It does have some coloring tips in the book. Um, and there's a part one and part two. So this is the cover picture here. I just thought this would be so nice to do for the month of November for fall, autumn and Thanksgiving in honor of Native American culture and to bring more diversity to the coloring world. So I highly recommend you picking up this book. It is full of gorgeous portraits. Um, and you can use your more ethnic skin tones, uh, whether it's pencils, markers, pens, in this book as well for the Native Americans. You could do all of the foliage sort of um, fall and autumn colors in here if you'd like. Or not. This is the one we're gonna do here. It has nice wide leaves and clothing and because it's zoomed in a little, so you can really use your water-based mediums, which is why I chose it. Um, if you use marker, like for example, all this hair, it's gonna use up a lot of ink. Um, so you can use like your Derwent ink tins or these water-based pens, brush markers, watercolors, or anything else you would like. Some of them are more detailed or zoomed out than others. This one is gorgeous. Love the braids. Um, my Pan Pastel Skin Tone set would be great for all the skin here because they do have darker shades and it quickly covers a wide area of skin. I might... I'm going to do at least two. I like this one because you have a guy in here as well. Male and female Indians. I think I will do that one as well. This one is really pretty. I really like this one. There are a lot of... I, re, I really like this book. And part two is a repeat of the same pictures. So... Anyway, it's a little annoying with this curled up part here. Um, on the back of this book, you can see some of the pictures as well. And there might be a, yeah. Wait a minute. Wait just a minute. 
does that picture oh no, this is yeah yeah it's the same okay looks the same that maybe i saw something different there <laughs> um i'm gonna put a divider page here so uh, i just have to keep breaking this sort of crease and the curled up pages is a bit of an annoyance um not the you know greatest paper but it has the black backing so if you do use water on here you don't want to go too heavy because <clears throat> the paper is thin so you don't want it to wrinkle up so i'm just going to set this aside while we look at the pens so i did not know that karen dash even made um markers or, pen, or these kind of pens um ironically i have the karen dash luminance and i've never opened them <laughs> so we are going to do that in a video soon as well so these are gorgeous fiber tip pens with water soluble ink um, they're good for wet or dry application you can wash them from fabrics they have bright and transparent colors or medium tip line width 1.4 millimeters hexagon shape so they won't roll off your table these are made in switzerland so fingerprint here has a very nice tin it comes in as well which are ever that easy to open without a little leverage <laughs> um the tin is attached there's some note here um different languages talks about their the history of their pens really nice tin and it does have 30. This is the different Fibrillo products. That's interesting. So it says on, these look like stickers. I'm not sure, this is kind of weird, but you can see um, it says on here, there's Karen, here's the Karen Dash Neo Colors, the Karen Dash Permanent Marker, the Karen Dash Super Color Soft Pencil, the Luminous Pencil, some of the tools, um, this, the Aquarelle. So these are just the different Karen Dash type pencils. So I'm gonna, or, or I'm sorry, uh, mediums. I need to get the Aquarelles. Um, I just ordered for um, the Spectrum Noir Aquarelles. I haven't got them yet. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to check and see what I don't have and put them on my list. So these are the gorgeous pens. Love how they all have white lids, 30 colors. We have some nice yellows, um, only two reds, two kind of raspberries, several purples going into blues, more blues than, uh, than reds, only four greens, a couple of browns and blacks. This is one only one skin tone that I see. So it's very basic colors, but it's your whole rainbow palette. So if you know how to mix and match, since it's water-based, that should um, work for you as well. Um, so opening one of these up. So yeah, they definitely have that hexagonal shape. So it's not gonna roll. So they're not round. Um, Karen Dash Swiss made 185-90. Now is that 185-110? So they do have numbers. It's very light lighter than I would expect for a pen. You don't even feel like you're holding anything. Um, interesting tips. So interesting. Yeah, so it's a kind of a pointed um, end here, you can see, but not too pointed. It's supposed to be apparently the perfect shape according to Karen Dash. The lids are, it's odd. It goes in and then inside the lid there's a more tighter narrow opening where the tip goes so this is a, like a tip holder maybe it's to protect it from getting frayed when you pop it in there let's see you want to make sure you center it ah, it's a really long lid that's interesting not that easy to get off um all right and it's my understanding they have brush markers as well so i'm gonna have to pick up some karen dash brush markers so um, the tips, the fiber tips are similar to a pit artist pen tip. So I think since we're going to do a little bit of my Native American book, I'm going to use a couple of greens. So we have about four greens. There's like an, uh, an evergreen, 
kind of a lime and olive and sort of a uh, Irish green. So let's do like maybe a couple of, let's just take out all the greens. Let's test them out on those giant leaves in the book. So I'm always, so this is one reason I chose my Native American book because they're two of each. So if I'm not applying this right, because this is the first time I've ever tried these, I have another one if I mess up, another picture. <laughs> so do not test new mediums on pictures that you're worried about messing up because um, it is always experimental. I'm sick of my soup. So we have these giant leaves here. I was thinking of something like, Hmm. We could do the emerald, like this dark sort of forest green down the center, and then the lighter ones here. Or we could do a brown there. I want to see if there's only two browns for her hair. So let's just straight up try to take this in color. Make sure you can see. We're going to color right inside the sort of very wide vine here. Very light. I don't. Okay, so this is interesting. I'm kind of just swiping it. You're not going to sc scribble it like a crayon. I'm just pulling. It does feel dry, not in a bad way, but dry like a fiber pen, like a Faber Castell pen, or like the Stabilo um, <coughs> fiber tip pens. So this is the centers here. Just dry. Let's do one of these. And then I'm going to do the leaf and we're going to try some water. Um, it would be too big of a surface, this whole giant leaf, to, to just color it without spreading with water because you would use up too much of the ink, in, I, in my opinion. So I'm going to take this olive green, sort of olive color. <laughs> they are those are a little tight. I'm going to sort of color in in here in these kind of crease shadows. No idea what's going to happen here. Just a quick color because we're going to water base it. And then I'm going to do. I'm gonna try to go over the water with my pit, my pen now, my water pen. You just pop the lid off. Um, has a little brown on it from last time I used it, so I need to use my clear paper. I want to squeeze, get some water out, make sure I get all that brown off. This is pretty afraid I've been using it. Give it a little squeeze, shake out the water, then the tip is wet, and we're gonna just kind of. Um, now this is not the best water paper, paper for water. I'm just, was getting that wet while it's still moist. I'm gonna go in here with this lighter green around it and we're gonna try to just kind of water brush, water the brush, the whole thing. Yeah, so like you can't cover every nook and cranny or inch. Just getting enough ink on there to kind of be able to spread it around. You're going to see a lot of that scratchiness. We are going to blend it all in with the water brush. Give another dollop if you need more water. Oh, look at that. See, I'm spreading the ink. So I didn't need to get every you know nook and cranny like if you were coloring with a non-water marker. I'm gonna just get a little more color over here, just kind of scribbling it on just to get the ink there. And I'm gonna do that. In hindsight, I should have done brown and not emerald in the center because these two colors do not match, but art is an experiment. Oh, the water though is blending it amazingly, amazingly, amazingly. I'm not even using that much ink. Yeah. I could try to go over this, this um, 
forest sort of, is this a forest green? It's more of a forest than emerald. Lighten it up, there we go. Lighting up and spreading the green in a little. So let's then do the other side. I'm doing this more olive one here. And I'm gonna zoom in and show you this whole leaf once it's done. I'm just kind of trying to keep the color in here. Now I'm going to water brush it again. Squeeze on my paper, get the water flowing. There we go. Now this one, if you leave, looks like if you leave too many streaks in your dry coloring, it's going to leave some white. I want to really mix it in. I did this one a little different. Here I did these sort of veins really dark. There I did it light on the other side. So you can, can you go back over it when it's wet? Got to be careful going back over it when it's wet or you will tear the paper because this is an expensive paper. Just beware. Generally not advised. I'm just doing this fairly quickly so y'all can kind of see what it's going to look like. Kind of scribble in some of that color. And got to get the water going. I'm actually just full on doing like it like a paintbrush now. I don't like real paintbrushes. I like my paint pens because I'm used to holding pens, markers and pencils and a brush. I feel like I, a regular paintbrush, I don't feel like I can control it as well. Um, but I'm not a painter, so this just feels more like coloring to me. Yeah, so it did it a little different. That's very interesting. Indeed, I'm going to um, go back over this just a little bit when it's wet. So yeah, I pulled up a little paper, so don't go over it again. Every time I do, I regret it. All right. This is a great way to cover large surface areas with water markers because you don't have to Color every surface. Just get a little bit of ink in there and blend. There we go. And that's it. Not the greatest, but that all that sort of um, this green is very nice. I kind of want. I don't like that sort of emerald green I did there. Or that forest green, whatever that color is in the middle. I'm gonna zoom in so y'all can see how this looks. But yeah, I covered all that surface area really quick. I'm thinking we should do some browns and do her hair. You guys want to do that? Let's do that next. We're going to do her hair. We have here, oops, not the easiest tint to open. We have, we have American. I want to do brown. This would have probably been a better color for those veins. And the leaves I could go over it. I don't know what will happen. <laughs> I'm going to do those for her hair, though. <laughs> her hair could have a little more black in it. It should, probably. I just want to do it brown. Oh, should it be more black? I want to do it more brown. I don't know why. I'm weird. If I just... Oh, it's wet, though. It's still wet. If I go over this with a little brown, let's see what happens. Just one spot there. Okay. Oh, it's kind of blending in nicely. Look at that. Hey, hey now. Very gentle. Don't want to tear up the paper. Let's see. We're blending now. Two colors. It's wet, though. So ideally, you want to do this the first time around. That's a little better. I think it's better than that. That one green didn't work as well. Love it. Okay. Let's look at these two browns. I'm going to do very simple hair. I mean, if you're using a thicker based marker, you can just do each streak, four different shades, like a gradient. So of starting black to lighter brown. Um, I'm going to do that here, darker. I'm going to go down 
halfway and then blend in the lighter brown. I'm gonna kind of do two strands at once. I'm just pulling it as you see, kind of making lines here. And I'm gonna go into this one. Um, there's no specific right or wrong technique for this. I mean, there probably is, but you it's not that difficult if you've never done this. I do do this with some of my other pens. And you will see over time, if you experiment, what you like more. So I covered most of the white. All right. We're gonna water this up, squeeze it on my paper, get the water going, and I'm gonna pull down this color. More water. It does take a little more water than I expected to really get these colors. It's okay if it goes over this way because the hair is on that side, but you don't want it to really bleed under her skin. I'm gonna have to use markers on her skin to if it bleeds over. Um, if you're doing any of these water-based mediums and you're using different mediums on the same page, do this first. So whatever bleeds over, once it dries, you can go over it with a marker or a pencil on a different part of the picture. There we go. And then if I want to re-darken the upper part of her hair, I'm just going to very carefully put a little more color in because I don't want to tear the paper. And then we're going to mix that again. Now, now it actually is leaving little squiggle lines because of the fact that it's already drying. So if you want it darker, I guess kind of put it on thicker up front. See it's bleeding onto her skin tone. That's fine though because we're doing a dark skin tone with markers. So I'm going to use my Copics. So this is really ending up looking a lot like a watercolor. I might be using too much water. I probably am. No, I am, in fact. But I want to not be here all day. Let's see. We're going to kind of go over the wet part that's bleeding over. Let's go in a little darker and see if that makes a difference. Bring this down. Try not to actually color color with it. Let's see, I'm not adding extra water. We'll just go with what's already on the brush, and that makes a difference. The more water you, you use, the more translucent the ink will become. Keep that in mind. And good thing her skin tone's dark because it bled all over. You might normally want to put something like a piece of paper up to a line so something like that doesn't go over if that's a concern you have. Most, that's why you do this wet medium first. It looks great. Hey, <coughs> sneezing. Oh, bless me. Um, so let's just finish up our hair. We can also do something else, like a little blue on the feathers, if you want to see a little blue. And you could also, like for her fingernails, let's say you wanted to do them red like they're painted just use the straight up red don't do the water on it for some small areas you can do the pen um dry so otherwise you know it looks streaky if you're doing big areas like this i do want to say that the water on applied to this ink is going on very easily um, so these are high quality pens. I, I've tried with my Stabilos or my Brunzeals, a few others <clears throat> that are water brush pens and they don't spread, the, the ink doesn't spread in quite as well. All right. Let's give it a squeeze, some water going. Here we go, just full on paint brushing it on. I don't know if the marker, when you brush it on dry uh, before you do the water, it needs to still be moist before you apply the water to get the effect. 
Not sure. Like I'm working quick because I keep thinking it's gonna dry, but I don't know how much that matters. Um, so let me just finish this up the side of her hair and I will zoom in and then we will do our nails. We'll try out the red and then we will do her feathers and pretty blues. Now, since we're going to the sky, the sky is right next to this, and I'm going to want to do the sky a light color. So, theoretically, you want to not go too close to the edge with a water brush if you're going to not be covering up, like, with a darker marker or something on the side. So, you have to kind of know what color you're planning on doing that side. I just realized I missed this whole bottom part of her hair under the leaf. So, I'll be going back to that off camera. Like here it's fine, her outfit's gonna be dark, her skin's gonna be dark, so, oh, but over here we have a light sky, so we don't really want um, that to bleed over. I'm gonna not quite go to the end here if I can help it. Because the water will spread a little. You can also use a little lighter bit of water. And it's fine if a little brown gets in this leaf because it already has brown. Gonna dab it right there instead of brushing right around the edge, of the side, so it doesn't go over. There we go. There we go. This is part. Of, oh, that's her ear. Whoops. Don't want to do that. Now it's darker here than here because I applied more ink. I kind of feel like I want to dried much. I'm just going to put a little more over here. See what happens. I can get in a little more coverage. It's not as easy to go back after on this thin paper and add more, so that doesn't really work. So you want to put it on darker the first time. But yeah, so I will finish up all our hair off camera and you'll see the whole completed piece when I do my what I colored video. Let's though do her nails. Let's try out one of these reds and do the feathers. So we do have, I think, a nice dark, nice bright red for her nails. And I am thinking the feathers. Let's try a couple blues here. Let's do a dark. Let's do like three different blues. Should and shall we? And just kind of. See if we can blend it all up. I am all for experimenting. So I'm going to put on this gorgeous red. It is a really pretty red. Straight onto her nails. Since it's such a small space. And just do little, little squiggles. I'm not going to do water on this one. So you can see how you can use these on small areas. And if you do little squiggle and circles, not streaks, it won't leave lines. Does she have another hand somewhere? No. I'll probably put this same red later into your lips or her face paint. So, all right, see how easy that was. So I got these three blues here. I'm thinking let's just do like, let's just like mix the colors. So like, let's do a little more, let's do some blue here. I have no idea what this is going to look like. I'm just going to see what happens when you mix three colors on one item. Get like a, and then we're going to do the water brush. This is all just a big squiggle, squiggle. Okay. If I wasn't trying to keep the video shorter, I would take my time and actually color this in before I water brushed it, but you know, I just want to see if it works by doing it this way. Three different blues. All right. Water brush time. Whoa, got some on my hand because that hair is still wet. Squeeze it, get some water out, and 
in we go now i don't know if this is going to be more green or what's going to happen here let's turn actually the, the turquoise one might have been too dark to blend But it is blending. It's a little harder to do the blending, as you can see, on these small, like, pointy, non-open non shapes. Because you're much more likely to spread over. I am going to go over the vein here. I can go back over it with a dry brown marker once it's dry. Just kind of dabby. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. There we go. Yeah, so they do blend three different colors. You just have to keep kind of working it. Easier to blend when you're on a bigger shape. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see these two things here. And then we're going to try the Nina paper. So there's those three blues I did all together. So it looks nice, right? Kind of, I mean, it bled over, that's fine. It's gonna be brown, but nice colors. Three different blues makes it look kind of natural. There's the hair and the leaf, but you see what I mean? How it bled over onto her skin because I just went heavy on the water and it spread. So I'll be covering that up with a dark marker once this is all dry. But on this side, I kind of dabbed it so it didn't go into an area that I'm gonna use like a lighter, maybe a sun color or a blue. So great, great, great for blending with water brush. Love it. Um, I thought we could try something here. Like let's move this, this Nina paper. Um, shoot, my page is wet. Oh, well, that's fine. It's going to be water anyway. And we could try... I should have saved the blue to do on that water. We did the palm. Let's do, let's just do some pink and purple water. So I'm gonna pull out one, two, I'm gonna pull out these four, because this is just one I, intended to, to wreck, so <laughs> I wasn't actually gonna do it and complete it. So this is just a fully a testing color page. Um, how about if we do, I'm gonna test this with the water pen. So I'm gonna turn it like this. I'm gonna go over some of these waves with the dark purple. Just where some of top here. Then I want to go in with the other purple. This one's a little different. It's really a matter of how much I think you want to put down. I'm actually going to blend all four over this area and then we'll do just like some individual colors lower down. We'll see how this looks. Experimenting is fun. There's that more kind of, this looks like a nice hot pink. All right, so gonna get my water pen going, get a little water going. Squeeze till I get a little drop. I'm just gonna go heavy here because it's just a test page, another drop. Now the squiggle lines, you have to go pretty heavy on the water if you don't want it to show the streaks. You can, we're gonna try below or below straight non squiggle coloring. I just want to see what happens if we blend all these. Yeah, I don't like this look here. It's 
not blue, not bloody as well as this many, this many colors. This, the Nina paper is holding up really well. Uh, there's not, that's not blending as well as it did on the coloring book. Um, let's try a flower, just the purple. Let's try just the flower and not doing squiggle lines. Let's color it all the way in. It's very interesting. I'm gonna color this whole flower in, cover all the white. Yeah, because I was doing a lot of loopy squiggle lines and when you go dark to light altogether, you're gonna see the dark. But I don't know if it's the paper or not. We shall see. All right. Let's take this. Let's take this and just re redo this flower. Yeah, that's much better. Okay. So, I mean, honestly, it's still not blending as well as it did on the Amazon paper. <laughs> Um, here, what I did is, because I had the dark, dark purple all the way to the light, and I just did squiggles, and it, there's too much variation between the dark and the light, so it's not looking as natural. That looks good. And then I'm going to go in with this hot pink, and we're going to do all water on this. So you really want to have two to three colors very close together not too much variation between darkness and light or tones if you're gonna not cover all the white and just kind of squiggle, squiggle it on there like i was doing on those green leaves or it's apparently going to be noticeable I'm doing this lightly because i don't want to tear up any of the page let's put the water around the outside of the flower on this pink I want to get all the white on this one. It's pulling little bits of the paper up, so I'm fairly certain this is not a good water-based paper. I usually use entirely alcohol markers and pencils on this paper, which it's gorgeous for. That's what you see all my Etsy printables done on. But we're going to go over this. It is bringing the pink out. Look at that. That's interesting. So it, it kind of lightened it and softened it. That's interesting. I can bring, wow, look at that. It's bringing the pink and purple all the way out pretty far. Let's do a little bit right here. Okay. So, interesting, it's not blending right there, but it's giving a nice light watercolor wash. Hmm, mystery, I'm gonna have to keep working with these more. So who wants to see a little yellow? Let's do a little yellow up in the leaves. I'm sorry, the palm trees. Interesting. Love, I do like how it um, water washed though. So that's quite fascinating. Oh, and I got, whoa, hello, come back. I got some water dollops. You can just blend that all in. All right, let's pull some yellows. How about oranges and yellows? <clears throat> Test them all. Here's the oranges and yellows. Now let's do a little I'm gonna zoom in y'all and show you some of this later. I'm gonna do just a little bit of orange, the tip of this palm tree. And the medium orange and see what it does with the water. Um, you do always want to pull from dark down to the light, not backward. 
I'm putting a little yellow here. Not a very good gradient, too sharp contrast. It's okay. Get some dots. dots. My brush is really frayed. I've been using this for about three months, so I think it's time to open my pack and pull out a new one. Yeah, so I'm just pulling the dark down, dark orange to medium orange into the yellow, which is really the way to go here. We had all the darks, mediums, and lights together, and I was just kind of swirling them here and pulling it down. And it did turn that bright orange into kind of a fall autumn brown. Look at that, and then you can take a little bit of these yellows here. Um, I'm not an, any kind of an expert, nor am I a giant fan of water-based mediums. I prefer alcohol markers, um, pencils, pastels, but I like to try new things. Let's get some of that pink off. Mm. Heavy water, but I'm really just getting that water on there to pull up that yellow. Probably want a different color brush if you're gonna do um, pinks, purples, and then oranges. So yeah, it's it's spreading it to a light tint. So you could theoretically just do a tint. Let's see. It almost looks like a pastel tint. I like the light yellow and it might look good for a sky. That's nice. Let's try this orange again. This is a different orange. Hope you guys aren't too bored. So this is just a quick test. Yeah, let's see if we can. My hand's falling asleep, y'all. Let's pull this down. Get that water flowing here. Let's get a lot of water. Going real heavy on the water. Yeah, the dark ones on this paper are not blending as well. You notice that? Like they did on the Amazon paper. That's really weird. Huh. Well, see, it does show you the paper has a lot to do with how well your medium works. That's really interesting. Oh, I do not like the these pens and or water based on this paper. So here's kind of, yeah, so see what I just did? The orange one isn't, isn't really blending. That's that really pale yellow tint from that really light yet lemon one with nothing else and tons of water. Here's where I tried to blend for, didn't work. Here's where I tried to blend for, didn't work. Uh, it did bring a nice pale, kind of more watercolor tint here by just pulling, pulling, pulling the color from here. And that's when I did it, coloring it straight on. So I definitely think that these work better on this paper for sure. And um, a few tricks are to not go from too dark to light in one medium, since these were very similar in color. These are similar color. So definitely take some practice working with them. Um, I'd say they are nice pens. They work like a standard um, water brush felt tip pen. Um, as far as are they better quality than others? I don't really know. I haven't used them enough. I should also try these in like a Joanna Basford book. I do have a water-based mixed media paper I could try, but I don't have anything printed on it. So I will try that for another picture. So yeah, that is my review of the Karen Dash um, water-based pens. And I have to say overall, I, I disappointed it's not working on that paper because that's the paper I always use. <laughs> so that's more for alcohol markers. But I, I am liking how it works in the book and it does perform like a watercolor. So anyway, I will keep working on this picture and you'll see it completed um, in what I colored in November. Thanks everybody for watching and I will link below where I found these markers in case you wanna try them out.